You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey you guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Just let me know on Twitter the Gaming Dragon today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Promises to Keep. So this is a new Let's Play series that I'm starting. Um, it is a... I don't even know what this is about, to be honest. Um, a uh, person on Discord messaged me that they wanted me to cover their uh, their visual novel. And of course, I said yes, because this looks interesting. So here we are. So I guess let's go ahead and jump right back in. I don't know what to expect. So I, I, like, I do like going into stuff blind. I'm a lot more into that than I used to be. So <clears throat> I have no expectations. Let's see what this game holds, shall we? All right, Alarm Chain, you're up. You're up, girl. All right, please enter your name. Your name will be Leo. Yes. Sure. We're sorry We're sorry to inform you that due to severe weather conditions, your upcoming flight has been canceled. Please log into our app or website to reschedule. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, I guess I gotta go into my uh, Delta app. <laughs> Fuck! I just laid down. First still wet from the shower, luggage packed and ready to go. I was bracing myself for a short night of sleep, but now it looks like I have no flight to wake up for tomorrow. I stare at the cancellation me cancellation me cancellation message, silently willing it to change into something else. It doesn't, of course. I pull myself off of my creaking mattress, reaching blindly for the suitcase I'd placed next to the bed, and zip it and fish out my pillow and an extra blanket. I wrap it haphazardly around myself and stuff the pillow under my head, not even bothering to make the bed properly. My phone buzzes again. An email from the airline, bringing another reminder of cancellation. Yep, I'm escaping it now. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I was really looking forward to leaving. After a prolonged minute of staring into nothing, I begrudgingly opened my flight app. I, the bright colors of the loading screen beamed down on me. I roll over onto my side and watch the wind-beaten window, that thin sheet of glass keeping the blizzard at bay. What am I doing? There's literally no point in trying to reschedule now. A snowstorm like this will put the entire city out of commission for a while. I take one last look at my phone. Low battery mode. 3% power. Another feeling. I flop my arm over the side of the bed once again, pawing around for the charging cable. The phone buzzes lightly as I plug it in, and I flip over to stare once again at the window. Sleep finds me faster than expected. At least in my dreams, I am some. At least in my dreams, I am somewhere else. <laughs> somewhere else? Didn't you want to live here? Didn't you promise all those years ago to all those people that you'd return? Now that you're here, you can't wait to leave. Face it, you've returned, but you're not really living here. You're just, you're just waiting to die. Damn, that's a morbid thought. I shiver a little. Something feels off. I poke my head out of the tightly wrapped nest of blankets. My bleary eyes take a moment, take a few moments to adjust to the bright light peeking through the curtains. What time is it? I reach for my phone in the nightstand, sleepily sweeping my paws around my desk until I find it. I groan. It's on the floor now. I begrudgingly roll to the edge of the bed, still somewhat protected by my covers. Fishing my phone off the ground, I tap the screen to check the time. Nothing. I have sworn I plugged it in. I get up, still swaddled in my blankets, and stumble over to the window. I open the curtains in. Huh. Oh my god! Thank you, I had known the storm was going to be serious, but standing at my frost-covered window, I'm greeted by huge, looming, mountainous piles of snow. It had been ages since I had seen anything like this. Adjusting my cocoon of blankets, I reach out a paw and place it gently against the glass, feeling the chill seep into my paw pads. The view through my window was comforting in a way. It reminded me of a, chi of a childhood morning, so the unparalleled excitement of a snow day and the cozy security of a warm house in cold weather. I shiver again. A warm house. I look down at my still-dead phone, then back up at the snow-encrusted window. My brain feels fuzzy and slow, unable to fully comprehend my situation. Wait. I turn and sweep into the living room, my blankets trailing behind me. I walk up to the thermostat on the wall. Uh, excuse me. You've got to be kidding! I can only see my reflection staring back at me in the temperature control panel, the interface itself blank and devoid of life. Suddenly it strikes me just how cold I am, how cold everything is, from the air brushing my face to the floor beneath my foot paws. The power must have gone out at some point during the night. And with it, of course, the heat. For a few long moments, I stand completely still in the center of the living room, attempting to process this turn of events. 
I trudge over to my fridge and open it out of inst out of instinct, but I'm quickly reminded that it cl that I cleaned it out last night. Probably for the best. This thing is useless without power. Well, that's a bad situation he's got himself into. <sighs> Defeated, I slowly walk to my chilled easy chair and sit, unsure of what to do. Without a clear way out of this mess, all I can do is start to daydream. I wonder if he's still here, during the storm like everyone else. Who am I kidding? I've been back here a whole year and there's been no sign of him. Not that I've actually, not that I've actually scoured the city for him, but... I've just been so busy. Work has been so busy. Life just got in the way. Jolted out of my thoughts by the doorbell. Startled, fur standing on end a little, I craned my neck, trying to see this visitor through the through the, blah, through the frost caked window. When that fails, I finally uncurl myself from my chair and step quietly toward the door. Peeking out of the peephole, I can see nothing, just a white haze. It must be covered with snow. I jump as the knock sounds once again, right next to my head. Hello? Anyone in there? Uh, my name's Theodore, and I live down the street. I'm just checking to make sure you're okay. Theodore. Yes, I remember running into him once or twice on the way to work. An Arctic fox, about ten-ish years older than me. I reach out a paw to open the door, then realize I'm still swaddled in blankets. I frantically shed my sheets and scramble about for a coat, cursing as I knock it on the floor. When I'm finally ready, I cautiously open the door, and the wind hits me like a truck. My fur fluffs up and I curl into my jacket, shivering. I had expected my thick, less snow leopard pelt to keep me safe from the wind, but clearly I was wrong. The bundled up Arctic fox stands in my doorway, paw outstretched to knock again. Oh, he's cute! Oh! Uh, oh, hello! Sorry for the uh, surprise visit. Uh, Leo, right? I nod dumbly, too cold to give him a proper reply. He looks me up and down, concerned plain on his face. I'm checking up on my neighbors. I understand a lot of people lost power last night and... He stops mid-sentence and takes a tentative step forward. Do you mind if I come in? And then we can shut the door. You look like you're freezing. I take a guilty look behind me at the state of my living room. Actually, if he's a snow... If he's a snow leopard, then he should have... He shouldn't be have any trouble dealing with uh, low temperatures like this. In fact, the fucking Arctic fox shouldn't either. Uh, it's a little messy, but okay. Yeah, animals can survive in some really crazy weather. I step backward and let him shut the door behind me. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, Leo. Some weather we're having, right? He gives me something between a grimace and a smile, clearly trying to lighten the mood as I shiver next to the door. He looks me up and down again. I nod once more, pulling my coat tighter around myself. I miss my blanket cocoon. How, uh, how can I help you? Well, I'm hoping I can be the one to help you. His eyes scan the room, landing on the dead thermostat and piles of blankets on the floor. I wince internally, thinking about what a mess the place is. It's looking like this whole side of the street lost power. As I understand it, the snowstorm knocked over a tree, which in turn uprooted an electric pole. Oh. My ears droop. That's pretty serious. He locks eyes with mine, then his voice thin, his voice gentle. Yes, I'm afraid it is. I I'm sorry, it looks like most of the neighborhood will be out of power for a few days at least. A few days? Panic starts to bloom in my chest. I was already freezing my ass off, and it was only getting going to get colder. Theodore seems to notice my alarm and gently reaches out to place a paw on my shoulder. I feel its warmth through my shirt, seemingly the only source of heat in the whole house. Leo, please don't worry. I'd be happy to house you until your power comes back on. That's why I'm here. His voice draws me back to the present. I look up at him. I still have electricity in an extra room for you. With heating, of course. I'm actually housing a few other people as well, neighbors from the side of the street. You're more than welcome to join us for however long you need. The gears start turning in my head. Before this, Theodore and I seldom spoke, and now he's offering the house to me? I didn't have any reason to be skeptical, but... I know this might sound like it's coming out of nowhere, but we haven't had a winter this bad in quite a while. Neighbors should lay out for one another in times like these, right? A group of random people? One another in another person's house? Someone I didn't really know? And the crowd we've got is pretty friendly, I promise. His tone is warm, inviting, and absolutely genuine. I take one more look at the dead thermostat, and it stares back at me vacantly. Well, it seems to say, what other choice do you have? I take a deep breath and regain my voice. Okay, sure, if you don't mind, I'd love to stay at your place, at least until my power comes back. Theodore beams at me, clearly pleased. Glad to hear it. Why don't you gather some of your stuff to bring over, and let me know if you need a hand. No, I've got it covered. Just uh, give me just a second. I walk briskly to my room, heart pounding. I enter my room and grab the luggage I had carefully packed yesterday. 
Fuck, it's so much colder in here than I realized. Trembling slightly, I take one more look around, slipping my dead phone and its charger into my pocket. I knew I was set on leaving this room and this house behind today, but I didn't expect it to happen like this. I exhale shakily, remembering to breathe. I had never been to Theodore's place. To be honest, I had, we had barely spoken before this encounter. I'm not even sure I know which house, to, which house is his. I begin to worry in earnest now, twisting the handle of my luggage between my frozen paws. I wasn't even able to be here. I was supposed to be on a flight going far away. Hey, come on, Leo. You don't have time to mope or, or to panic. I chastise myself lightly, remembering once again to breathe. How's it so easy to forget? I look down and realize I'm still wearing last night's clothes. I should probably change real quick, especially if I'm going to be meeting new people. Oh, God. Just... Uh. Excuse me. Just keep moving. That's all you have to do. I take one more deep breath and release the handle of my bag. Just be normal. Theodore looks up from his phone as I return to the living room, glancing at my full luggage. All packed? Anything you need me to carry? No, I think I've got everything I'll need, and just and it's just down the street. I can always come back. Fair enough. Ready to go then? I give the place one final look around. It looks back at me, cold and painfully familiar. Yeah, I think I am. Well, I'd suggest a warmer coat, and you'll definitely need some snow boots. Huh? Mine's still fuzzy from the weather. I pause and look down at my clothes, then back up at Theodore. Look, I've been walking around in it all day. That wind is playing nasty, and the sh shallowest snowdrifts are thigh-high, at least. I know we've got some serious winter padding, but this storm is something else. Oh, of course. Snow boots. I shake my head violently with my brain fog, but all it does is give me a headache. Right, right. Sorry, let me just... Theodore flashes me a warm smile. Take your time. I put her around the messy room, collecting my thickest coat and sturdiest boots. My paws twitch slightly at how cold they are. I feel like everything in the house froze overnight. Including my brain, I guess. I quickly zip up my coat and button over the zipper, then begin struggling with the boots. There we go. That's more like it. I try to give him a smile back. Ready to go. Promise this time. Pretty. The snow stretches out in front of me, pristine, fresh, and almost paw print free. I take a few steps, disrupting the nearly perfect surface with my heavy boot clad paws. Despite Theodore's warnings, I gasp slightly as my legs sink in past the knee, cold slush seeping into my jeans. I lift my head slightly, and the snowfall seems to slow for a moment as I take in my surroundings. Ooh, pretty. Heh, <laughs> cutie. In that lingering moment, the world seems so quiet, dampened by the hush of winter. Yeah, that's the thing about lots of snow. It really dampens sound, like to an eerie fucking degree. Fat, fat flakes dance around me on their way to the ground, piling higher and higher in my submerged boots. I resist the urge to stick my tongue out, like I did as a kid, as I watch them descend. I truly can't remember the last time the city has been this silent. Snowflakes start to accumulate on my snout, on my shoulders, on the sides of my coat, wherever they can find purchase. My snout starts to sting, yet my other senses feel so, feel so muffled. For a single precious second, the world seems to stop turning. All is silent, calm, and still. And then the wind picks up again, and the sweet, beautiful snowfall starts to blow directly in my, into my face and eyes. I hiss in pain and hike up the hood of my, hood of my coat. The howling gusts tear at the fabric, trying to rip it off and ruffle unchallenged through my fur. It's like nature itself was reminding me of its preeminence. I feel the weight of my cold phone in my pocket, a victim to the wrath of the storm. I think of the plane I was supposed to board, grounded by the weather, buried like the cars on the street. Alright y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. I really like this so far. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Kate Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to our not-safe work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye